Welcome to Explaining Factorio, a show where I explain certain aspects of the game Factorio. My name is Diablo, and this episode we shall talk about logistics. Now, recently, some viewers have been asking me to do a video on logistics and circuit networks, um, and I've been thinking about doing something like that for a while, as there is quite a lot to cover on both subjects, and me not wanting to bore you with an hour of me talking, I've split these subjects into two separate videos. Of course, the usual caveat still applies. I may forget something, I may even get things wrong, and if you think this has happened, please leave a comment down below in a calm and constructive manner so we can all learn from this and I will try to respond to them as best I can, if needed. Um, a lot of this stuff may be basic knowledge to some or even most of you, but I wanted to include it in this video anyway so that the information is a complete story and can inform any player from any level of experience. As usual, I will be putting timestamps into the description so you can jump to any section that you are interested in. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. The basics. There are two major systems in the game. The logistics network and the circuit network. Both are equally valid and both serve an equally valid purpose. The difference between the logistics network and the circuit network is that the logistics network is a more global awareness of items in a given area, whereas the circuit network is a closed system with only information about the connected entities. Some of the entities that can be connected to a circuit network, however, cannot be connected to the logistics network. For instance, the wooden chest is not part of the logistics network but it can be connected to a circuit network. This makes it so that you really have to know what you would like to achieve before making a decision on how to approach it. As mentioned, we will be focusing on the logistics system today. The logistics network. A logistic network is created by a roboport, which stands at the center of every logistic area. There are two areas the roboport once placed, defines the construction area, marked in green, and the supply area, marked in orange. The supply area is what we would refer to as the logistic network area. This is the area where the logistic system broadcasts its content, thus making it possible for logistic robots to collect and deliver goods and for entities that have been connected to the logistics network to act and react to the conditions set upon them. The logistics network area can be extended by connecting multiple roboports, making sure the logistic network areas are connected as indicated by the orange dotted lines. If these orange areas are not connected, they will create separate logistical areas that are unaware of each other. For example, if I were to place another roboport here, you can see that the orange dotted line is indicating that the uh, logistic areas are connected. However, if I move it out one space, then there's no orange dotted line and these areas are separate and unaware of each other. To demonstrate, let me place this down. Cool. Now we have two separate areas. How do we know? Well, if I, for instance, put down a requested chest there and a chest full of, well, let's say, I don't know, uh, iron there. Now, if I were to request iron from this requested chest, like so, normally you would expect that uh, robo the robots in the roboport over here would search the area for iron uh, and to pick it up and to deliver it to the requested chest. However, because these areas are unaware of each other, these robots do not know the iron is there and cannot pick it up. On the other hand, if I were to replace this um, roboport so they are connected, and let me do this very carefully, like so, it's now connected and now the robots know what to do and will 
place the iron in the requester chest. This is because the two RoboPorts now combine their logistic areas and share that information. I'll be ignoring the construction area and construction robots for the purposes of this video as they are well, really self-explanatory and can use the chests within the logistics area the same way the logistics robots can, with the only notable exception that the construction robots can place down entities where the logistic robots cannot. Using the logistic network. There are two main ways of using the logistic network. The first is by building logistic robots that will collect and deliver goods that are available within the logistic area. The second is by connecting entities within the logistic area to the logistic network. You can do this by clicking the icon for the logistics network in the entity that you want to connect. Bear in mind that these icons will appear even if the entity is not actually within a logistics network. This can create some confusion about its functionality, but it mainly provides a safe way to set up a new design outside your existing logistic area without having to worry about it reacting immediately to the new conditions you have set. This way you can experiment with new ideas without messing up your running operation. Once done, you can integrate this new design into your factory, most likely by using a blueprint. Robots and chests. So the first way to use the logistic network that we talked about was using logistic robots. Logistic robots will carry any item that is requested for transport by an active provider chest, a requester chest, or a player, either for delivery to the player or removal through the auto trash system. They can collect items, well, besides from the player, from active provider chests, storage chests, and passive provider chests, but not from requester chests. Logistic robots can only deliver items, again, besides to the player, to request the chests, but only if there is an active request, and storage chest, if there is space. Items that cannot be delivered while being carried by robots, because for instance the player moved out of the logistics area, will be delivered to a storage chest first, before they can be used with the logistics system again. This is because items in transit are also no longer counted as part of the logistics system. For this reason, I usually only have one storage chest in my factory. This way, I can utilize the way the game handles stray items in the logistics system to my own advantage by having a trash sorting system that keeps all non-delivered and auto-trashed items neatly sorted. But we'll get to that in the Circuit Network video. The way a request is handled by the logistics network follows a strict path. First, it will check if there are any active provider chests with the requested item. If there aren't any, then it will check for storage chests with the requested item. And if those are not available, it will check to see if the item is in a passive provider chest. Now, if none of them have the item available, the request is sent to the back of the queue and the next request will be processed. Active provider chests broadcast their content to the logistics network and will always try to unload their content, even if no outside request is being made. If there is space in the storage chest, the items in the active provider chest will be moved to that space. Storage chests not only broadcast their content to the logistics network, but also lets the system know if there is any empty storage spaces inside. Furthermore, it keeps track of the items that have been placed inside of it. This is so the network can prioritize when deciding where to place items carried by the logistics robots. This way, your wood will always be delivered to the storage chests where you initially placed it. For instance, let's say next to the boilers for the steam engines. This, however, is not a request made from the logistics system like the requester chest does, but rather an inherent trait of the chest itself. When the storage chest is full, the logistic robots will happily deliver their wood to the next available storage chest. It is therefore best to view this feature as a simple but convenient way to keep your chests organized, especially in the early stages of the game, when there are not that many different parts in the system yet. Passive provider chests broadcast their content to the logistics network. 
and nothing more. As it is third in line to provide items to the logistics network, it will only be addressed by the system if there are no items in any active provider or storage chests within the logistics network area. The requested chests do not broadcast their content to the logistics network. This means that any item delivered there will no longer be counted as available in the system and will not show up in the overview on the right hand side of the screen when hovering over a logistics chest. They can however make requests from the logistics network and broadcast that request into the system. Logistic robots will then try and comply with the request if the requested items are anywhere within the logistics network area. Logistic entities. So what can you connect? Well, here I have all the entities that are either permanently part of the logistic network or can be connected to the logistic network. Entities that are permanently part of the logistics network are the chests. As discussed previously, they are always connected in some form or another, as long as they are within the orange or logistics network area. You can also verify this by hovering over a roboport and seeing that the chests get a blue outline. The same as electrical entities get an outline when hovering over a nearby power pole. And it works the other way around as well. If you hover over a chest, you can see which roboport it actually directly connects to. The other entities can be connected to the logistics network by clicking on the icon inside the entity you want to connect and then checking the connect box. It will then reveal an extra option screen where you can set the trigger condition that will turn on the entity. This condition will always be a comparative condition, meaning that it will compare one side of the equation to see if it's either smaller than, equal to, or bigger than the other side of the equation. And of course, if the condition is true, then the entity becomes enabled or active. Once connected, these entities will show an extra sprite on the surface that will indicate if the trigger condition is true or false. Green for true, red for false. And if you look really closely, you can even see a little signal wave coming off of the sprite indicating that it is listening to the logistics network broadcast. For instance, let's say I connect this pump to the logistics network by clicking connect. Now, I want this pump to work. You can also immediately see that it adds the uh, sprite that I mentioned. Of course, it is red because nothing uh, bigger than zero is not something it can equate, so it is false, therefore it's off. Now let's say for whatever reason I want to uh, have the pump working if there is enough wood in the system. So if wood is bigger than zero, start working. Well, there is no wood in the system right now, so it's red. I'll show you on the sprite itself. There we go. And you can see the little waves coming off. However, if I now put... Uh, wood in the requester chest remember requester chests do not broadcast their content to the system nothing should happen and again it stays red so we know that this is not being broadcast to the system however if i were to add wood to this provider chest now the uh, sprite has turned green and the pump is working well you have to accept that because you can't see that. However, if we do the same thing to this entity, we connect it, and then we say, well, only work if there is wood in the system. Now you can see that it's working. Uh, of course, if we now say smaller than, it will stop working because it's not smaller than zero. It's also not equal to zero, so it won't work. But it is bigger than zero, so therefore it will work. Same goes for the arm which we can also go connect wood bigger than zero. It's green, so if, if it has something to do, it will definitely do that. Lights, exactly the same. If wood is bigger than zero, turn on. Well, there is wood in the system, so it turns on. If I take the wood out, it turns off. It's all very self-explanatory. And again, of course, also for the power switch same story and it's on and you can see the little green dot there 
please note that you can get the information that is in the logistics network available for use in the circuit network, but again, I'll cover that in the circuit network video. Other situations. There are some other situations that can occur which we have not yet covered. These are 1. Releasing new robots outside of a logistics network. When you release a robot from your inventory into the world outside of a logistics network, it will always try to head to the nearest RoboPort with available docking space. So, if you want specific robots or rather specific amounts of robots in certain logistical areas, make sure you release them inside of that area. If there are no empty docking spaces anywhere, it will just stay hanging in place until a space opens up. 2. Robots outside of a logistics network. When robots find themselves suddenly outside of a logistical area, for instance due to a power loss to or destruction of a roboport, one of two things will happen. Either the robot is carrying no items, and it will then just return immediately to the nearest roboport with available docking space, or the robot is carrying an item, in which case the robot will hang in place until the logistics area can be recreated around it to complete its objective, the request for transport is still in the system queue, or a new logistics area is created around it and the robot will effectively act as an active provider chest and deliver the item to the first available space within the new logistics area. 3. Robots without a destination within a logistics network. Robots carrying items without a destination within the logistics network, perhaps due to a chest being destroyed while the robot was in transit, will stay hanging in place until either a new destination has been created or its power reserve reaches 300 kilojoules, at which point it will move to the nearest roboport, recharge and remain there in the air until a new destination has been created. Four. Robots with an unreachable destination within a logistic network. Robots carrying items with an unreachable destination within a logistical network, in this case it will always be a construction robot, will hover in place until the destination is reachable or until its power reserves have reached 300 kilojoules, at which point, again, it will move to the nearest roboport to recharge, but then will move back to the destination location and hover there and repeat this cycle until it has completed its task. For instance, when you want to place down a solar panel, but the tree that is in the way has not been removed yet. Well, if that takes a long time, the robot will hover back and forth between the destination where it needs to place the solar panel and a roboport to recharge until it has actually has placed the solar panel. Right, that's it for this episode. I hope you found some of it useful. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you did, subscribe to the channel, comment down below for any suggestions or ideas. My name is Diablo and I'll see you next time.